will uh, start with um, welding distortions. Welding distortions means distortions, structural distortions which take place because of welding. Because till now we had been seeing various methods of welding and as we said that welding being a thermal process, uh, because of the thermal process, thermal stresses may develop which uh, which may lead to plastic deformations in the structure. Plastic deformations means deformation of permanent nature, which are commonly referred to as weld induced deformation. So, any thermal operation done like we have seen in thermal cutting, oxyacetylene cutting when you do also it may lead to deformations. Similarly, when you do welding also it would lead to deformations which can be termed as uh, weld induced deformations or distortions. Weld induced distortion because you see the fundamental uh, requirement or uh, the desirable requirement of welding is as we said that it is a process to join two independent components together, join it, make it one integral. So, it is it is a essentially a joining process. So, what the end result uh, we look for? We look for a joint, a chip which does not have any defect right that is number one definitely that means it gives you uh, required so called integration among the two components means they were two individual pieces now they have become as if one. So, number one requirement is obviously when you do welding that it should be a joint free of any weld related defects. Well related defects are as such defects concerning to the fusion zone. There is another requirement to it that means when two pieces of plates are being joined say two pieces are something like this. Let us assume they are the two pieces being joined. Say this is some length say 4 meter this is some length say 2 meters right length or breadth whatever you uh, call it and this is for say 4 meter wide this is 2 meter wide. So, when you weld it I would expect a one piece of plate which will have a width of 6 meter right that is expected. I mean that is what we will expect right and this 6 meter means assuming these plates are perfectly rectangular. So, it, it is everywhere it is 6 meter right that is what would be expected and the welding joint was say along this line weld was done. But what in reality we get is not exactly like this 6 meter we get something like this. This is somewhat little exaggeratedly drawn. So, there is a possibility that right at the edge it might be around 6 meter exactly, but here definitely it will be less it will be less than 6 meter. This is what would actually result into. Okay. So, you can see again here also it will it might be just near about 6 meter. So, what has happened? We wanted to join these two plates and make one piece of plate which is 6 meter wide and say length was I mean this side was say 5 meter. So, we expect 
expected a piece of 5 by 6, but it has not become like that. But well, if you go about the quality of the joint, we may find the joint is perfect. So, is the job done perfectly? No. As far as welding is concerned, welding as a process implemented is okay, but the end result, because end result we wanted this, that should be the end result. It, it has not become like that, some defect has crept in, the defect in the dimensions. So, when we talk about welding defect, it, it is not, not only the defects involved in the welded joint, not only on the fusion zone, but also the overall dimension. Because one of the important aspect is dimensional accuracy. There is something called dimensional accuracy. Why? Because this particular, as you have seen, shipbuilding. Here, uh, as, as we said in the beginning, it is a kind of an assembly industry. You are, go, go, you are going on putting on, putting in several components together. So, as and when I am putting them together and putting process of putting together is by way of welding. If at every stage such uh, dimensional inaccuracy comes in the component, then obviously the end product also will become dimensionally inaccurate. There are cases where uh, one found that after the ship has been built, it has become shorter by 2 to 3 meters, shorter in length, over a length of say 200 meter, it became shorter by 2 to 3 meters. It is possible. That is one way of looking at it. Other way could be that individual component becoming uh, not coming out to the desired design dimensions, then the next component when you are trying to align and weld, it may become difficult, right. For example, in this case, it will result like this, that means the edge is becoming somewhat curved as if it is not straight line. So, suppose I will I'll have to weld some plate here, say this particular plate in vertical condition is to be welded to some other plate. <coughs> so, how do I weld it? The gap is too much here, right. So, this gives you a problem, dimensional in inaccuracy. So, these are actually results of so called weld induced distortion. So, if we look into the distortion mechanism, why, why it takes place. <coughs> distortion mechanism, how it takes place. We have a little bit talked about it previously while talking about distortions due to thermal cutting, right. So, it, it is essentially as you can see that uh, here in brief I have written the distortion results from the non-uniform expansion and contraction of the weld metal. It is a non-uniform expansion and contraction which is taking place of the weld metal and adjacent base metal during the heating and cooling cycle of the welding process. So, you can see what we are talking about is it is due to the non-uniform expansion and contraction, that is what is in important, non-uniform expansion and contraction of the weld metal as well as that of the adjacent base metal when during the heating and cooling cycle of the welding process. So, it is like this, supposingly we take a <coughs> say a small piece of uh, say a, a small piece of steel cube, a cube of steel, right, and we subject it to a uniform heating, uniform heating. So, what will happen in the hot state, if you can measure it, we will find that the dimension has increased, right. It has 
become somewhat like this say this suppose I put it in a furnace and I have a mechanism of measuring all the dimensions then I will find its height, its length, its breadth everything has increased. Now I let it cool down again I will find that it will come back to its original state. Why? Because of the simple reason it is not undergoing any non-uniform heating or cooling cycle. It is being uniformly heated again it is being uniformly cooled. So, it being uniformly heated means all the sites it is expanding right because of the uh, simple characteristic it has of that of so called thermal expansion. And again when it is being cooled it is being uniformly cooled it is contracting. So, it is coming down to the same shape. Now, let us assume that it is being uh, say the same uh, that piece of steel cube small one is held between two clamps of a vise. What I say it is being held, it is not being compressed, no force is being applied, enough force such that it does not fall off. That means enough force in this direction so such that it gives sufficient friction to hold on to the place. And now suppose again you heat it by some means uniformly, by some means means you can heat by a say gas flame, the same thing as I said can be heated by a gas flame engulfing the entire cube uniform heating. Here also I am heating it with a gas flame right. Now what I will find that in the hot state well supposing I am not measuring what is happening. I am heating it and letting it cool down. What I will find that it falls off. It will after it cools down immediate observation would be that it is not holding to the place it will fall off. And now if I measure I will find the shape of the thing has become somewhat like this. What I am showing you in the dotted line obviously little exaggerated. But like this that means it has become narrower in this direction and has increased in the other direction. Why? <coughs> that means the dimensions have changed, dimensions have changed. What has happened is that it could not when, when I was heating it, it could not that expansion and contraction was not uniform. In the first case the expansion and contraction was uniform that means in all directions it could expand freely again contract freely, but here it could not expand. So, the stresses developed and eventual result is this. So, this concept equated to the to this will give you why deformation takes place because of welding say two plates being welded means what? A zone along the weld line say this is my fusion zone obviously within the fusion zone the temperature rose well above the melting point of the temperature uh, metal melting point temperature above that and then part of the adjacent metal was also subjected to a sufficient amount of so called temperature rise such that it uh, gave rise to the quantity alpha delta t significantly higher that means it tried to expand, but the rest part of the pl plate was cold this part can be referred to as a, the hot material rest part is cold. So, that cold material opposes the expansion of this that is how the expansion takes place right that that is that is that is that is how the stresses eventually the stresses were built up which leads to contraction of this 
contraction of the plate. <coughs> so, what you can what you see is non uniform expansion and contraction which leads to the uh, deformation due to welding and welding being a process which involves localized heating that involves localized heating that means it is not the entire structure is not being uniformly heated it is only it is getting heated up lo uh, locally and also the heating pattern is also different different means heading pattern at the top is when two plates are being welded. So, your weld bead and the fusion zone would look like this. If the welding is being done from top that means heat source is coming from the top. You will have more heat coming at the top whereas, less heat coming at the lower half of the plate because of simple reason heat conduction will be less right. Thereby, again it will lead to a different kind of deformations, right. So, we see because of this, uh, essentially because of this non-uniform heating and cooling cycle as well as non-uniform expansion and contraction final thing what is happening is development of shrinkage forces, development of shrinkage forces. That is why we, it is said that all distortions, these distortions are related to weld induced distortions or thermal distortions. Whether it is weld induced distortion or because of some thermal process like flame cutting of a plate also also leads to the similar phenomena. So, what happens they are caused by the shrinkage force generated due to the thermal loading on the structure because of the shrinkage forces. <coughs> because of this phenomena that means localized heating is taking place, the entire plate is not getting affected because of the heat part of the plate is getting affected means undergoing expansion rest part of the plate remaining cold not allowing expansion and thereby net result is development of shrinkage forces. Now, how this in which way this shrinkage forces will act on the plate will lead to basically these four kinds of deformations. So, whenever welding is done if there is a deformation one would expect either in the form of a overall shrinkage right overall shrinkage of the structure which which uh, we have shown here the overall shrinkage has taken place of course here i showed shrinkage only in the transverse direction it can be also in the longitudinal direction means along the weld line but generally in the transverse direction is more significant it can be angular deformation it can be deformation uh, so called buckling deformation stru structure may buckle. Why buckling deformation? Because compressive forces it may lead to buckling of the structure. Then rotational distortion we will see, see these in little more in detail. So, this is what is the so called shrinkage di distortions as you can see this is the transverse shrinkage these two pieces of plates are be, uh, were welded along say along the middle line. So, it has shrunk in the transverse direction more and in this direction less in the longitudinal direction. Why it is becoming like this and not a straight line that means, when these two plates are being welded, we say that the final shape is becoming like this, right? And not well, just straight lines. That means the overall breadth has become less, but not uniform. What what is happening? It is 
essentially what happens is say over the length it will come straight again it will taper down this is how the shrinkage takes place that means over a certain length it will be all uniform the shrinkage is uniform but there is a shrinkage is tapering down as if to the original dimensions as well as at the end this is simply because essentially all the shrinkages whatever deformations are taking place they are because of the thermal gradient thermal i mean differential in temperature differential in temperature whatever temperature different temperature rise over and above the ambient temperature right so it depends on the thermal profile right so what happens is at the beginning when the welding is say the welding has started from this point so before it attends say the welding comes the welding torch comes up to this point the transient nature continues the transient nature continues means up to this a kind of steady state has been attained up to this point a steady state has been attained steady state in what sense that the same thermal profile is being repeated as such welding is not a steady state phenomena it is a transient phenomena right the entire welding process is a transient phenomena means you never attain a steady state condition but what you attain is a, a condition which repeats itself so that means a kind of a quasi steady state it is not a steady state but a apparent steady state why apparent steady state where the same same thermal profile is repeated same thermal profile is repeated that is why we see when say these two plates are being welded so we have a uniform weld bead say this is my weld bead so uniform weld bead means what means i i have at all these points there are my fissure boundary say a temperature level of 1500 degree centigrade was attained only thing say my uh, welding is starting going in this direction supposingly i measured the temperature here 1 2 3 how i will see we'll see like this this is my time temperature this is 1 2 3 all these temperatures are same say i am taking at the boundary of the fission zone that means it is 1500 degree centigrade the melting temperature 1500 degree centigrade right only difference is there is a time lag because you can see they are away from the starting point so at different time instant this thermal profile is coming but the same profile is being repeated with a time lag but individually any point it is continuously changing that means it is always in a transient state so that transient nature is repeating itself that is what is called quasi steady state that is what is called quasi steady state so this makes things analysis and other things somewhat simpler because otherwise transient means it becomes in the time domain continuously all the parameters are changing anyway so what happens this transient nature at the beginning and nearing the end it changes that means the what happens is 
you have the plate say the two plates are being welded right at the beginning and nearing the ends this is my welded direction suppose so if supposingly here at 2 3 4 points i try to see the thermal profile at these at these points what i may see is something like this So, this is the first curve is for the point 1, second curve is for point 2, it is for point 3, it is for point 4. So, what do you see that after it reached reach that point 3 and then beyond the whatever is the peak temperature, I am away from the fission zone, not necessarily it is say it is 1000 degrees centigrade. say at this point it is it has at 1000 degree centigrade before that it was less at point 2 it was say 600 degree centigrade at point 3 it was some say 800 and then it reached 1000 and then it continues similarly as we go at the end again there will be tapering off of the temperature why that is happening because the plate here the plate was not there so, the heat flow pattern was different, heat could not flow in this direction because the, there is no conduction, no plate is there, but there was convection from the plate edge, whatever heat loss has taken place through convection. Here it is, con that means the conduction, convection, the overall heat flow pattern stabilized after the location of point 3 after the location of point 3 that is the better way of putting it that that means the heat flow conditions stabilizes beyond a certain point again it becomes unstable while nearing the end while nearing the end nearing the end means the end of the well line why because again heat flow cannot take place in this there is no continuity of the plate so, that is how the temperature profiles right at the beginning of the plate, a little zone, again at the end of the plate, a little zone will be different. The temperature profile will be different. This is temperature profile. Temperature profile means temperature time history, right? That will be different. And that being different, your deformations will be different, right? That is why we see that a part of the plate. that that is that is why we see that the deformations at the beginning is increasing and then is so called becoming uniform stabilizing again it is decreasing i am putting right at the as if the original uh, dimension may not be so it might be little less depending on the thermal profile and how it happened etc but at least this was that a middle part of the plate will remain uniform, but at the edges it will not be so. Right. So, that is why we see that the deformation patterns they look like this and obviously the extent of deformation in the transfer direction is much more because the heat flow in a direction perpendicular to the welding direction is more. Right. So, that is what is shrinkage. So, shrinkage can be of two types transverse shrinkage and longitudinal shrinkage. Obviously, transverse shrinkage is more compared to longitudinal shrinkage. Here, what we are talking about uniform shrinkage, that means the entire plate dimension has just shrunk, the plate is totally flat, 
that means there is no out of plane deformation. Deform all the deformations can again be divided in two heads out of plane deformation, in plane deformation. So, this is in plane deformation, it has just shrunk. Right? Then comes angular deformation, right. Angular deformation is out of plane deformation, that means it is going out of the plane of the plate. So, what do you see here? The, the two simple diagrams I have given. There is angular deformation due to fillet welding of the stiffeners. Angular deformation due to fillet welding of stiffeners. Till now, all these examples, what we had been seeing, they are all butt welding, cases of two plates being welded. Now, say the plate is there and some stiffener is welded. So, what will happen? It may lead to one is say a plate is there, a vertical stiffener you weld one side, it may lead to the stiffener getting deflected like this or stiffener is vertical, the plate is deflecting like this both sides. When this side is welded, this lifts up, when this side is welded, other side lifts up. That is what is angular deformation or in this case the plate is restrained and the vertical member or the stiffness is welded. If I weld from one side, it bends, deforms like this, then I weld the other side, it comes back, but not to the original position, it remains deflected in the previous position. Why? Because it has become restrained, one side now has been welded, so it will not, the forces will not be enough to bring back to the original position. Now, what happens is, instead of this, this frequently happens, the first one, the plate deforms. Why? Because of the reason that when a stiffened panel is fabricated, how do you fabricate? Say we put a stiffener, the stiffener is held in position by means of supports. It is not allowed to move this way, that way, stiffener is held in position, but the free edge of the plate is, the edge of the plate is free. So, it deforms, that is what is here. It has, it, it is, it is lifting up, deforming, right. Both the edges, they are just as, a, as I am welding, the plate is lifting up. Right? That is because of the fillet welding, and this is because of the, in, in case of butt welding, in case of butt welding, uh, the Defor angular deformation due to butt welding. Now, as you can see in the picture, this butt welding, the sinkage forces, how the sinkage forces are working. Since the weld metal is more at the top surface, so more heat is there. So, you have more sinkage force because sinkage force is directly proportional to the amount of heat which is going in is directly proportional to the peak temperature it is attaining, right. So, thereby you have a higher sinkage forces on the top surface, as you go down it is lesser. So, that forms a couple, that forms a couple which gives you, uh, leads to the case of a bending moment and thereby an angular bending. Same thing happens in case of fillet weld also fillet weld, what is happening is, suppose this is your plate, the vertical say a stiffener or whatever is being welded. So, the fusion zone would be like this or the weld, weld deposit, this is be, this will be the weld deposit, this will be the fusion in the parent metal. 
right. So, what will happen a contractional forces will work here it will try to shrink right whereas at the bottom below the even here here the shrinkage is uh, deformation is even more say this is my neutral axis below the neutral axis there is no no force is acting because the fission zone will be will be above the half thickness of the material it will not penetrate much because in fillet welding important is you will have to deposit the necessary material here in the fillet having the required leg length as we have already mentioned leg length right. So, there will be contractional forces or the shrinkage forces acting at the top. So, these shrinkage forces will give rise to a bending moment of the plate it will bend the plate. In the similar reasoning shrinkage forces will work in in the vertical plate plate also if the vertical plate is restrained it cannot move so the bottom plate moves if the bottom plate is restrained and vertical plate is free to move it will move if the shrinkage force is in this direction so it will have a bending moment this side so it bends so whichever direction of wherever the welding fillet is done forces sinkage forces higher level of sinkage forces work on the well deposit right. So, that is how we see that how the angular deformations take place right. So, these are the cases of angular deformation one in case of a fillet welding other in case of a butt welding. So, this uh, <coughs> angular distortion in butt weld depends on the joint geometry on the joint geometry means as at times I have mentioned that this is a case of a square butt that means two plate plates are being welded without any edge preparation this is referred to as square butt whereas this is single V group single V edge preparation single V group edge preparation or single V edge preparation it is in the form of V right it depends on what angle you will give and all that it is generally say for steel 40 to 50 degree angle it can be much lesser 20 degree that is what is called narrow gap welding we will not go in that whatever because narrow gap means when I am saying 20 degree narrow gap means it is coming closer to square bot coming closer to square bot. Why we are going for narrow gap essentially to reduce deformations because here we see a square bot leading to a more uniform heat distribution in thinner plates yields minimum angular deformation because when it is a square butt what happens your fusion zone is also like this. So, more or less it is uniform at the top and the bottom difference is very less, but when it is a V group difference is quite substantial as you can see difference is quite substantial. So, in actually what happens in thinner plates comparatively of the lesser thickness you go for square bar right in thinner plates whereas, you do edge preparation for thick plates say around above say 14 millimeter less than equal to 14 millimeter not equal to less than 14 millimeter why this V group is done because otherwise you will 
you may not get proper fusion, root fusion, because the objective is you will have to have proper well deposition, proper uh, root fusion, proper uh, bottom reinforcement, proper top reinforcement, all these are necessities. So, as the thickness goes on increasing, you will have to, you may have to give a edge preparation such that you can reach the root necessary root melting takes place, root fusion takes place, right. So, in thinner plates, welding is feasible without any root preparation that means, without any edge preparation that means, the, keeping the edge as square bar. Advantage of square bar is what? As you can see here uh, schematically, that means, the fusion zone is fairly rectangular, means uniform at the top and at the bottom. If that is so, then this shrinkage forces developing also will be fairly uniform or in other words, very less moment will be generated and thereby leading to very less angular deformation. Whereas, in this case, it is substantially different, the fission zone. That means, much higher amount of heat is generated at the top whereas, much less at the bottom. So, your shrinkage force distribution also becomes like this. So, thereby a more bending moment takes place. That is why we talked about narrow gap, this single V group, but you keep the gap narrow 15 to 20 degrees, uh, degrees such that that will lead to a fairly uniform heat distribution at the top and at the bottom. Anyway, that will not go. So, a single V group welds lead to a higher level of angular distortion as just now we have talked about. More severe angular distortion is caused by fillet welds. These are because of uh, butt welding and fillet welding we have already talked about. This is the more we see that much more severe distortions take place in case of fillet welding because in fillet welding as we have seen the shrinkage forces are right at the top there is nothing below so the bending moments are much higher bending moments are much higher so in the process what do you see when several members are uh, fillet welded as in case of a flat panel a flat stiffened panel, uh, we find the plate takes a kind of a uh, cylindrical shape. Here I have mentioned as a polygon because as if uh, wherever your longitudinal is being welded, it is bending from there. So, when 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 you have a flat plate, one say stiffener is welded, it bends here when another stiffener is welded, this whole thing bends like this. This is obviously, I am drawing with a very, very exaggerated. Right? So, it keeps bending. That is the princip principle of line heating we talked about while bending of plates same thing line heating will give controlled heating. Here the deformations are not desirable, they are using the same principle we bring in deformation in line heating. Right? Same principles are working. Only thing in welding things are little more uh, little different as far as distortions are concerned or extent of deformation are concerned because here the temperature attained is much higher the amount of heat involved is much higher compared to that of case of line heating because in line heating we do not go beyond 700 degrees centigrade in steel plates in in normal strength steel plates if you have to work with higher tensile steel plates we even restrict it below 650 degrees centigrade but here in case of welding the temperature goes beyond melting temperature right so uh, i mean Physically, the, the, the phenomena are, 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 are same or similar, 
but the conditions are little different. In any case, so what do you see the kind of deformations that means it is not enough when you say that we will have to fabricate a flat stiffen panel which means this that means after the fabrication I am supposed to have a flat panel with stiffness welded welded uh, onto it. So, my design thing was a flat panel with stiffness, but after it is fabricated we get a curved panel right and worst is curved panel means because this has deformed the angular deformations have taken place. Here also angular deformations have taken place. So, it has become like this or the edges have have a angular deformation and these things have buckled that is also is possible. So, that means after the welding is done again you have a dimensionally inaccurate panel because of the welding deformations like this. Well, uh, here I mean the previous example is a case of a stiffen panel where you have only stiffen in one direction right. That means, it is uh, free to bend in one direction uh, it, it is restrained along the longitudinals, but can bend along with the longitudinal. So, it gives a cylindrical kind of curvature the entire shape whereas, in this case you have transverse members also this is a more 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 of a uh, kind of a uh, si similar to the that of uh, stiffen panels which are used in ship building because we have long gel members we have transverse members supporting them right. So, this is suppose a case of a stiffen panel with long channels and transverses say a part of the deck structures they are the deck transverse suppose right and you have the deck long channels. So, there what we will get? We will get the uh, longitudinal defor uh, angular deformation of the edges, but the deformation pattern will change because here you have the transverse that will not allow the edge to deform that much as it is deforming at this edge. Similarly, at this free edge, this, this plate is deforming so much, say by amount of delta, but as you come closer to the transverse it will be less, but in any case there are the case of angular as well as in fact buckling deformation. So, that was the previous one was essentially angular deformation and also this middle it could be a case of buckling of the middle plate and this is a pure buckling deformation that means the entire panel has buckled along with the stiffness due, due, due to the sinkage forces we will see that due to the again the sinkage forces because what what is happening as you as you saw if if i one second say let us draw this say this is my stiffener fillet welding is being done right so what is happening the sinkage forces are working in this direction right here the sinkage forces are working so thereby you are having the angular deformations now after the uh, well structure has cooled down in fact the buckling takes place say th this is the let me draw it little say along this line one stiffener has been welded along this line another stiffener has been welded. Now, after the welding is done 
when a continuous panel is being welded, then it is not free to expand or the entire structure is not free to even uh, deform in an angular deformation way. This edge can deform easily, it can take a shape like this, it can take a shape like this, can deform easily, but the middle this deforming in this fashion is not very easy. So, what will happen? Residual stress will form, residual stress will form and what has been observed after the weld get uh, the entire structure cools down near the weld zone, this hatched line I am drawing, the residual stress is always uh, tensile in nature near the weld zone, the residual stress is tensile, this is the weld zone or I will say, well, by weld zone I do not mean only the fusion zone, it is the hot zone means fusion zone as well as the part of the adjacent material which was subjected to significant temperature rise. Right, significant temperature rise, let it be hot zone, the fusion zone along with the adjacent material. So, there you have tensile residual stress, stress. tensile in nature, rest is balanced by compressive here it will be compressive stress. That means, this part is under compression and that leads to buckling. So, buckling is essentially a phenomena because of the residual stresses developing the tensile in nature and their the uh, compressive in nature and that leading to buckling. So, that way part of the residual stress is also relieved, the structure deforms and it buckles. Right. So, that is why you will see when a, a stiffened panel is made, it is more prone to buckling in fact. Right. The compressive stresses degrade the buckling strength. What happens? The compressive stress, residual stresses it reduces the buckling strength. It is actually uh, through some such assumptions it goes that uh, the reduction of the critical buckling stress for rectangle plate is essentially given by this that delta sigma critical is actually proportional to the ratio of the re compressive residual stress to the yield stress. Right. And what happens is this compressive residual stress which forms, it is almost near, I mean equal to or more than one third the residual st uh, uh, yield stress, they are of very high value. In fact, tensile stress is near about equal to the yield stress, whereas the residual stress is near about one third of the yield stress, compressive residual stress. It is distributed over a larger area. So, the magnitude is less and magnitude is approximately one third. So, what we see there are certain uh, direct relations, simple relations with the residual stress with the heat input, Q is the heat input, right. Uh, and uh, the critical buckling stress through Euler's formula is this. So, if we equate these two, we find that the net welding heat input which will just cause buckling distortion is given by this. This is a simple relation because one way would be to, to work out to, to, to work out the entire thermal profile through which you can uh, calculate the stress distribution pattern and thereby say when deformation is going to take place but that is a more complicated 
process whereas through this it gives you a simple so called engineers tool through which when the voltage and current and welding speed Q is voltage into current right and S w is the welding speed right. So, the Q by S w is the rate of heat input rate of heat input. So, depending on the rate of heat input we can see that what rate of uh, the, that is related to this. So, so this is the amount of uh, I mean I mean once we calculate this that gives me the amount of heat input which if given will lead to may lead to a buckling distortion. So, accordingly one can decide the what welding speed you will give or what voltage and current you give ok. We will look into this little more in the next class.